Greetings everyone and welcome to Batasera Nation. Today we're going to look at a tutorial how to install Batasera. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is a thumb drive or it could also be an SSD drive or an external drive if you're ready to install the main computer. But for the time being, the safest thing to do if this is the first time is to go ahead and install it on the thumb drive. Okay, uh, after you get your thumb drive, then you need to go to Batosera dot org. I'm going to be writing all the links in my description in the YouTube video, so don't worry about it if you can't see it right now. It will be in the description, okay? That brings up to this page, and then you'll see where it says you can download. So, get about to set a Linux 29, version 29. Um, version 3 is about to come out real soon. Okay, as you can see from here, that you can install about to set on different systems. PCs, different handheld gadgets, different uh, board, including the Raspberry Pi, or Droid, or Rock Chip boards, uh, and then some M-Logic boards as well. And include, you can also install some old desktop uh, or laptop. So today we're going to go ahead, I'm going to install this on a laptop, an HP laptop. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one, 64-bit laptop. That's not that old. You can go torrent file, drink link, you can just go ahead and click direct link you know download it and you can just save it okay since I already downloaded uh, it's already my desktop the second thing you're gonna need is this little free piece of software Balena Etcher or most people call it Etcher okay again I will provide the, the link on the my description don't worry about it uh, it's right there. all right so there from there it goes download to Windows click on that and then of course put in your desktop wherever you want to put it. It's already downloaded. I don't need to do that again. Okay. The third thing you're going to need is BIOS. The BIOS for the different uh, gaming systems from the emulators themselves. Now you can go to Google and you can type Batocera BIOS 5.29. Depending upon the version that Batocera is on, you put that version there. In this case, the current version is 5.29. Soon, version 30 is going to come out, so you put it 5.30, okay? You get different results. Some of them can be found on different YouTube's uh, video, right? Um, but I found that the easier thing to do is go to Microsoft Bing. You get easier results, faster results. Same thing, about to set a BIOS, 5.29. And in this case, it's the second one. I click on that. That brings me to this page. Um, and from there, I just went ahead and selected Google Drive. There's my Google Drive. So I can I can preview the file. Just go ahead and download it. Download it anyways. And you can again put it in your desktop. Okay. All right. So once you've downloaded the Batocera and the Etcher, go ahead and click on the Etcher. Going to let you install it, uh, and of course you install that first. Since I already installed it, let's go ahead and pull it up. Once I install, it's going to look like this. Okay, make sure your thumb drive is in your uh, computer. Flash from drive or file. All right. So I go to my desktop. In this case, I've got my desktop right there, and there's about to set it right here. I select on that one. That's the one I want. I want. Then target. That's going to that's be your thumb drive. Okay. Now, in some cases, you know, you are ready to install it on, on, the, uh, on the hard drive or an SAC drive. Okay. You select that one. It's going to tell you this is a really big file. This is a big hard drive. You sure you want to install it? If you know for a fact you want to install it on an SAC drive that's two terabytes or more, select that and you say yes. Okay. In this case, we want to install it right here on my thumb drive. Okay. Select that one, and then I hit flash. Again, it's telling me it's a large drive, but I know it's a 256 uh, thumb drive. Right, that's no okay. That's, that's no. It's not a mistake. So yes, I'm sure. Look on that. And you, you know it does its trick. So like yes, then let it do its thing. Okay, we're done. 
So you can just cancel that. You can close that out. Okay. All right. Now we got the BIOS, which we already downloaded, right? So let's go ahead and unzip it. And here's my BIOS. These are all the different BIOS they need to get the emulators up and running. And then I assume you should also have your ROM drives, your, your ROMs already, okay? Here's my ROMs. I already have them in there. These are the ones I have already, okay? And this is in the format of about to set up, okay? One of the things that you should do is among the BIOS. Um, go to the BIOS, and if you're going to use Neo Geo, find the Neo Geo right there. The Neo Geo zip. Go ahead, and select it, copy it, put it to the ROM. Neo Geo, and then paste it. Okay, so it's right there. All right. So all the ROMs that about this needs has to be in this format. Whatever you make sure that you have in the correct format. Whatever the name is, and then you put your ROMs. Okay. And I'll tell you what format you need it under. Go to Infotex, and it'll tell you. For this, in this case, the Game Boy, you got either GB, ZIP, or 7Z. Okay. All right, copy this on an external hard drive. I got this on an external hard drive. My BIOS and my ROMs. And from there, you can just copy it to the button setter once it loads up. Once you're ready, uh, and you've got them copied, and you've got the uh, button setter thumb drive ready to go, uh, you're going to have to look for, on your computer or laptop, wherever you're installing it, you've got to find out the BIOS. Uh, setup. Okay. Go to type on Google, type BIOS setup, and whatever your system is. In my case, it's HP laptop. Uh, and again, even every system has a different button you need to press to get into the BIOS. Uh, it could be F10, F2, F12, delete button, whatever it is. In my case, of the HP laptop, I gotta press F10. Okay. Uh, so as the computer is, you know, make sure your thumb drive is right in there. As the computer is lo loading up. You're going to see something like like this in the box, once you get to the box. And then I need you to look for something that's going to say boot. Okay, every one's a little bit different, but look for the one that says boot. Uh, in this case, you can see here it has different options to boot from. You're going to select the very first one, the first one, right? And then, you know, normally it would be the internal hard drive. But you want to select the USB drive. Uh, make sure it's the USB drive, the thumb drive. Okay, uh, and again, the BIOS will let you change it. In this case, plus and minus will let you change what's going to be the first drive it's going to boot from. Again, we want it to be with the USB drive. Okay, so once that loads up, you're going to see it install. As it's installing, at some point, it's going to get, looks like it's got stuck on 75%. Okay, you need to be patient. Even though it may take a little while, it's uh, usually it takes a while. It takes between 10, 20, even 30 minutes long, depending upon the size of the hard drive. The larger the hard drive, the longer it's going to take. So if you get stuck on some 5%, don't worry, don't panic. Just let it do its thing. Let it do its thing. And eventually it will resume, and eventually uh, it will uh, finish off. Okay, now we're going to take you the next segment. We're going to take you to how it's going to look like uh, when you first boot up. Before we run Batocera, a word of advice in terms of the game pads that you can use. Uh, you can use pretty much any Bluetooth compatible uh, game pad, including you got 8 bit, you can use PS3 game pad, PS4 game pad, PS5. You can also use Xbox One uh, Bluetooth controllers, as well as Xbox 360. I've noticed that this is probably the easiest thing to do. If you got one lying around, You've got the wireless adapter, hook it up. It's easy, it's ready to go. You don't have to even configure the gamepad in Batosteta. It's ready to go. 
You also have uh, Wii pads, Switch pads you can use, XRK. So again, so pick one, um, and uh, eBit also works really well. Uh, so pick one of those, get it ready, so you can be up and running once you uh, uh, have Bacha Seta running. Congratulations! If you've done everything right, this is how Bacha Seta should look like when you first boot it up. And they've got some games in there, uh, some in the port right there. That's the interface. You can change the interface later on and give it a nice eye candy. But let's first thing first thing. Let's go ahead and copy the BIOS and, and, and some ROMs. Okay. All right. So to do that on the keyboard, press F1. You press F1. It's going to look like that. Then you can see here. I have a I have a portable drive. Look for your portable drive. Okay. Uh, and look for the folder where you copy your BIOS or ROMs. In my case, I have a folder called Bacha Seta. There's my BIOS. Select it. Copy. Okay. Then go back over here to share. And there's your BIOS. Just paste it. And it's going to ask you, hey, do you really want to copy it and overwrite things? Select Apply. And then say Overwrite. And then it's going to be copying everything that on the BIOS. doesn't take that long all right there's your arms okay you can see there these are going to be all empty again if you want to determine what kind of ROMs you need for your particular emulator just go into info and look for the extensions they need okay so I'll go back to my Again, if you also want to look at the different names, how, so how it's set up, just take a look at it. All right. So, let me just give you an example of one of them. Mm. Let's go Neo Geo. All right. Z zip files or Zip and Z files. Go back to my portable hard drive. To my Batosera. You can actually select everything to copy all at once, right? That's going to take too long, so let's just go to my Neo Geo. Select everything. Copy. And then go to your Neo Geo. And then paste it. Yeah, just override that. No problem. Now on mine, uh, I already have the images and videos already there, but I'll just go ahead. Okay, close that. Select file, close it. And you see, hey, what happened? It's not there. That's because you have to update it. So press the space bar in your keyboard and then go to game settings and then update game list. Hit enter. Yes. Now. When it pulls up, you're going to see it. There it is. You can see that I already got the, I already had the images and the video files already downloaded. All right, let's go ahead and hook up. Let's go ahead and hook up our game pads. So press the space bar, go into control settings, pair a Bluetooth controller. Now, if you have a you have an Xbox 360, I'm not gonna be paired. I'm gonna go ahead and pair my 8-bit gamepad. All right, so we paired up. Then select configure controller. And then you can set up a D-pad. Start. Select. A button, B button. And your hockey. Hockey is very crucial. Okay, we're set.
All right, the next thing we have to do, we have to get the Wi-Fi to work, okay? You can press start, go into network settings. Enable Wi-Fi. Go into Wi-Fi SSID. In my case, it's this one right here. I select that one. And then I enter my key. And if it works, you sh we should see it says Wi-Fi enabled. You can see that on the, on the right top corner of the screen, you can see the Wi-Fi uh, icon being turned on. All right, now let's go into changing the interface, right? Go into updates and downloads. Go into themes. And that goes, those are different options you have. You can pick the one you want. Some of, some of these look really great. I happen to like Bato Seto Club. Install. Then it's going to download. Some themes are larger than others. So you have to be patient as it downloads everything. And of course, I'm going to fast forward all this. But this other club has already downloaded and installed. Even though it's installed, you still have to change the UI setting. So let's get out of this, backspace, go back, uh, and then go to UI settings. Hit on that. Select theme set, and then select about to set a club. Now, you notice I have there about to set a club too. I'm going to explain that a little bit uh, after I show the, the original one. All right. And then you go back. And there you go. And there's about to set a club, huh? Look how nice that looks. Looks really cool. All right, let's go to NeoGeo. That's where we have our ROMs already configured. You can see that. Now you can change how this looks as well. So if you want to change it and play around with it, press the select button on your game pad. Uh, go to game list view style. And then you have different options. Each theme is going to have different options, okay? The main two ones for this theme are video and grid. So let's do grid and let's go back. And that's how it looks with the grid view. Some people like that. I happen to like the video. You can even change this even further. So go pre again, press select and then go back to view customization. You click on that. And then default grid size. You can change how it's gonna, that's going to look. You want it 2x2, two 2x3. By two, two by Let's try 2x3. Go back. It's a 2x3. Okay? So you can make it the way, the way you want it to make it look the way you want it. All right? Uh, let's go back to the way I like it. And let's go back to automatic. But you can play around with these things to your liking. All right? Um... Now, let me explain about the Setter Club 2. Um, see this here on the left hand side of the screen? You got those icons. I kind of didn't like those, and there's some of those that were missing. Uh, so I decided to change that. You can change these themes as well, but you have to do your own editing. So let's go ahead and press F1. Okay. And then I go into. And share themes. Right, let's get a better view of this so you can see it look, looks better. Let's go, let's go detail look. All right, so what I did, I selected that, I copied it, and then I went ahead and I pasted it. Okay, and when I pasted it, I went ahead and created Club 2. And then I press all right and does, it does automatically. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel all this. So when I create Club 2, um, you can change how those logos look by going here. System 4, MP, I'm sorry, System MP4, that's the actual video clips that they show. And then this right here is the actual logo. 
So I went ahead and I changed them the way I wanted. So let me show you. So you had to do it for every one of them. So I had to do it for all of them. All the ROMs I all the ROM says I had, right? Had several of them, all right? And change them by going again into the system. PNG file. Alright, so let me just show you how it looks like. My version. Close that out. Okay, let's go back to uh, pressing start. Go to UI settings. Theme set. I'm going to show you my version. And backspace. And this, see, see notice the logos look different? I guess this is the way I like it. Okay, I have another about to set a gaming system. The, all the logos have been changed. Okay, these right here you see there. Though I, I, if I delete the games and the ROMs in there, it will. I don't have those. It'll look differently. Okay, but these are the ones. These are the ones I have. The ones the logos I've changed. Okay. All right. So again, you can customize them any way you want. Um, by playing around with it okay so let's go into Sega Genesis okay I have a game there knows I got nothing in there so now I'm going to talk about scraping in fact the next video I'm going to talk about scraping and some suggestions and tips on how to uh, scrape these games and what you need to do to get the most out of the scraping system that's built into Batsu set so we'll look in that we'll look into that in the next video segment all right thank you for watching and I'll see you next time at Batosera Nation. Bye.